Hey everyone, this is Lomi rounding out my reviews of the art supplies Arteza sent me a while back to try out. Today I'm looking at the acrylic paint. I'm only using this on resin today. I'm not going to use it on a vinyl doll. I'll explain why a bit later. Right now we'll get started with the basics. Like the other paints and pencils they sent me, each tube is labeled with the name, pigment color, light fastness rating, and opacity. The set they sent me is 12 tubes of paint, so I'm going to start by putting a little paint out on a piece of paper just so I can get an idea of the colors and the paint consistency. They're a very soft bodied paint, which means they smooth out really nicely without leaving behind a lot of texture. Great if you like smooth blending, less great if you're interested in impasto. They have a bit of a sticky texture, so they hold to things well, and they also glide nicely. Out of the supplies they sent me, the acrylics are the only one that don't feel as consistent between colors. The texture is similar, but the more opaque pigments are a lot thicker and heavier, which isn't at all unusual in acrylic paints. However, I don't find the opacity ratings particularly reliable, as to me, the Thalo Green and Ultramarine Blue have similar levels of transparency, but the Ultramarine is labeled as being more opaque so I don't really know what their benchmark for opacity is. There are only a few colors that I would consider reasonably opaque, and that's two of the reds up here and the brown and black. I decided to focus my test on the brown and black paints because they're what gets used the most in face-ups. I start by thinning them out to an ink-like consistency using water mixed with Flow-Aid. If you're not sure how to thin paint for face-ups, I'll link to an older video I did on that subject. While I was able to lay down some eyelashes that look okay, these are really heavy strokes using a whole brush load of paint. I have to stop and reload my brush every two or three lashes. They're also pretty thick, so I decided to try some thinner brow hairs. Right away, I ran into the problem of the brush strokes being incredibly pale. If I do a fat, heavy stroke with a freshly loaded brush, I can get some bolder marks. But these are thick and unwieldy, and not the kind of marks I want for dolls. I switched to the black hoping for better results, but unfortunately the black was actually worse. And these are the most opaque paints in the bunch, mind you. When thin to the right consistency to glide in fine strokes, there just isn't enough of a pigment load for these to really stand out. While you could probably get some interesting effects with really diluted paint like this, Getting bold lines is a bit more important, and there's no reason you can't dilute a more heavily pigmented paint out to this level of translucency. The black strokes are very pale gray, and the finest strokes I did with it aren't even really visible. I'm not gonna lie, I was kind of disappointed in these acrylics, especially after the gouache and the watercolor pencils were so great. But face-ups are very particular and need paints to perform in a specific way, so not every paint will excel. I thought maybe I had messed up my thinning ratio, so I scraped out the paint I hadn't mixed into the inky wash and tried to dilute it less. The color I got was bolder, but then the paint was too thick to go on with such a fine brush. Since I have to rely on my smallest brushes for painting vinyl dolls, 
I decided there wasn't much point in even trying these on a Monster High. Because while they're intense and pretty when straight from the tube, they just don't thin well, and thinning is a necessity for face-ups. One thing I can say for these paints is that they're very resilient. I tried wiping them off with a cotton pad soaked in water, and they didn't move at all. So if you're looking for some highly water-resistant acrylics for some kind of project, you'd probably enjoy these. I had to resort to a magic eraser sponge to get the acrylic marks off, and even then it left some ghosting in the sealant. I had to scrub really vigorously to get the paint off. This is both good and bad because it's durable, but it also means removing mistakes can harm the integrity of the sealant layer. After scrubbing this paint off that vigorously, I wouldn't feel comfortable painting back over this area without putting down a new layer of sealant. My honest opinion is that these are not a great option for face-ups. For sake of further experimentation, I also tried them on canvas in a more traditional painting, which was an application where they seemed to perform as expected. So if all you want to do is paint pictures, you might enjoy these. For face-ups though, I suggest sticking to the gouache and watercolor pencils, because those are both excellent. That's all for today though. Thanks for watching. Bye.